regardless of our individual conception of what that power may be. We have all come to know that as addicts and alcoholics, we are suffering from a deadly illness for which medicine has no cure. It has never been by any treatment with which we are familiar permanently eradicated. Our recovery must be grounded in a power greater than ourselves. In order to form a habit of depending on that power, we must supply ourselves with diligence. The only requirement for each membership is the desire to stop drinking and using drugs. Each member squares his or her debt by helping others recover. You may like this program, or you may not, but the fact remains, it works! This is our chance to recover. Jesus! There's a vast amount of... <laughs> <laughs> in the fellowship, some people might be... Shocked! <laughs> oh my God! ...at our seeming worldliness and levity. Just underneath there lies a deadly earnestness and a full realization that we must put first things first. And with each of us, the first thing is... Recovery! Yeah! Three of us work 24 hours a day in and through us, or we... Bye! No, no, no! We use the AA Big Book, the inspiration for all 12 set programs, as a textbook and design for living. We wish to remind you that whatever is shared at this meeting may be an individual opinion as of today and up to this moment. We don't endorse anything that cannot be reconciled with what is in the big book. If you don't have a big book, get your one, son. Read it, study it, live it, learn it. Learn what it means to be happy, joyous, recovering from alcoholism and addiction. Thank you. Um, I'm Ashley. Ashley, I'm an alcoholic. Here are the steps we are taking, which are suggested as a program of recovery. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol and drugs, that our lives had become unmanageable. Step two, Anna, addict, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore <coughs> us to sanity. Step three, Anna, addict, alcoholic, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Step four, Kyle, Kyle, made a certain serious <laughs> moral inventory of ourselves. Not Not to to step five, local <laughs> drug addict, admitted to God, to ourselves, <laughs> and, and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrong. Step six, Avery added, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Uh, that's, that's right. right. Step seven, Scott Alcoholic Addict, humbly asked God to remove all our shortcomings. Yeah, come on. Step eight, Leslie, Alcoholic Addict, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Come on. Step nine, Shayla Alcoholic <laughs> Addict, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Come on. Come on. Step 10, the addict continued to take personal inventory and when we were all promptly admitted it. Not, Not justified. justified it. Jason, an alcoholic. Step 11, thought through prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. Remove our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 12, Charlie Alcoholic. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all of our affairs, all of them, every single one. Okay, we should have a prayer. Oh, 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 oh. 21. <laughs> 
Welcome to Anna's commencement. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. 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 <laughs> well, then we won't watch her language. <laughs> Wonderful. Fuck, no. Yeah, okay. When Anna asked me and Anna Anna to, um, <laughs> you know, be a part of this special day, like, I was trying to think back, like, when you were sitting literally right where you were sitting and uh, sitting next to you and you came in and you just looked lost. Also confused because you were sitting in a room full of crazy people <laughs> chanting. And I remember you saying, um, you know, this is a cult. I, I don't know why I'm here. Well, oh, I know why I'm here. But, like, I, this, you know, just have, you came in with just, like, the preconceived notion that, like, God was not a thing. You weren't touching that with the 10 foot pole. And then we've watched you evolve when you really kind of surrendered and you became willing to believe that it worked for others in here. Um, so we're going to touch on your favorite chapter, We Agnostics, um, a little bit, and then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. I mean, and I'm an addict. Yeah. Yeah. Here are thousands of men and women, worldly indeed. They flatly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves, to take a certain attitude toward that power and to do certain simple things, there has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking. In the face of collapse and despair, in the face of total failure of their human resources, they found a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction flowed into them. This happened soon after, the whole, after they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. Once confused and baffled by the seeming futility of existence, they showed the underlying reasons why they were making heavy going on life. Leaving aside the drink question, they tell why living was so unsatisfactory. They show how the change came over them. When many hundreds of people are able to say that the consciousness of the presence of God is today the most important fact of their lives, they present a powerful reason why one should have faith. So, um, that reminds me of you to a T because we... We all got to see, like, the change in you. Um, I don't remember the... Well, she remembers the exact day. I don't remember the exact moment. <laughs> but um, that you started really believing, like, and you started changing. And then you started helping other women, which was incredible to watch. Um, there was another part that we wanted to touch on. Um, sorry. Uh, some of us once. Some of us once had great self-confidence, but it didn't fully solve the fear problem or any other. When it made us cocky, it was worse. Perhaps there is a better way. We think so. For we are now on a different basis, the basis of trusting and relying upon God. We trust infinite God rather than our finite selves. We are in the world to play the role he assigns. Just to the extent that we do as we think he should have us, and humbly rely on him, does he enable us to match calamity and serenity? We never apologize to anyone depending on our creator. We can laugh at those who think spirituality the way of weakness. Paradoxically, it is the way of strength. The verdict of the ages is that faith means courage. All men and faith all men of faith have courage. They trust their God. We never apologize for God. Instead, we less let him demonstrate through us what he can do. We ask him to remove our fear and direct our attention to what he would have us be. At once, we commence to outgrow fear. So, we know we are very fear-driven. We like to... We're perfectionists, and we want to be strong for everyone, our families, our friends, everyone in the community. Um, really... A lot of you helping me was seeing this woman grow and then have bad days. And that what is what got me into a relapse every time was thinking that I had it, not relying on God or the fellowship, picking up the phone, calling when you're having a bad day. It's okay not to be okay. I know that's where we struggle a lot because, you know... We like to be strong and keep everything in. 
and for you, you know, I, I can't give advice, but um, yeah, I hope that you know that you have a whole family here who love you very, very much. I'm sorry, I said I was going to cry. <laughs> and and you don't got this you have got to work at this every single day but also just know that like we're going to be here to pick you up on the bad days that you don't have to struggle alone ever again okay sorry thanks i love you very much i'm so fucking proud of you um i got up there's so much i want to say but i know oh, this room wants to speak to you so, um, so yeah, ask for help on the bad days where, I mean, you know, Anna's not making Anna sober. God is doing that for you. And sorry, I meant to touch on this too, on we agnostics. You are the prime example, thank you, of a woman who came in that was skeptical. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there are people out there that are going to be in the rooms that are going to be looking at you like, okay, Jesus freak. <laughs> like, you know, and, and you are going to be able to sit there with these women on the outside and say, girl, I was there too. Like, I didn't think, you know, I thought this was a cult. I wanted nothing to do with God. And you can share your experience, strength, and hope with the next person. You are going to be able to help people that I can't help. And who she can't help. Who you can't help, you know, because of your experience, like Jean always talks about, our that's what we have is our own experience, strength, and hope. And so remember that when you're out in the rooms, especially like there are gonna be so many women there that do not um, you know, come in with those ideas that God is not for them, AA is not for them, and you're gonna be able to help them. So I love you. I love you too, Ash. Thank you. I'm Anna and I'm an addict. Anna, I do remember the day that you, I mean, I'm sure it was, you know, over the course of time, but like the day that you at least announced and that I could see that light in your eyes just get so bright and you, you shared during a meeting um, that you had surrendered and that you were finding God through all the women, I mean, all the people here, but especially through the women. And when you became my sponsor, um, yeah, just like Ashley was saying, you know, you don't have this, but every day, you know, just do your, your routine. And um, I just wanted to remind you about this part of the book. Um, so we are unable at certain times to bring to our consciousness with sufficient force the memory of our suffering and humiliation of even a week or a month ago. We are without defense against the first drink. Um, you know, we when we were doing food run one day, you shared with me some, and I shared back some of my experiences with psychosis, and that's heavy shit, man. And, you know, I'm just so proud of how far you've come. And just don't forget where you came from. Stay humble. You know, be yourself. Stay true to yourself. Because the identity that God has given you, you found. But, again, continue every day. You know, it's like a start over every day. Um, I love you so much. I love you too, Anna. I'm glad you're staying. All right. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is open. I'm Jason, I'm not a caller. Okay. Jason! Um, yeah, I haven't been here nearly as long as Anna. Um, and so I, I, I guess I didn't really see the change. I was thinking of no doubt that it was a change, you know, because how could there not be being here? But um, uh, sharing a meeting last night really resonated with me. Um, it was a great topic. And, uh, you know, it's been said that uh, like our eyes are like a window into the world, whatever, but I kind of think of things opposite or whatever. And um, I think of, of them as kind of a mirror, you know, because you spoke of like being caught inside your head, you're your toughest critic, um, harder on yourself than anyone else. And for some reason when I went home, you know, I was looking in the mirror and like the mirror up there says, the problem is you. Something that you shared last night also told me that the solution is you, when I looked in the mirror, you know? And I thought you were a little standoffish at first, not in a bad way, not like, you know, I didn't walk away saying, you know, she's a you know, real whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that, no, I never thought that. Um, 
you know, it's, it made me more curious than anything, you know, and I think it's because of a familiarity that I saw in you, like, you know, uh, some of the same things that I do, and then when you speak on it in the meeting, it puts proof to that, you know, so uh, that was one more little block that fell into place last night when you shared that meeting, and I always thank you for that. So. Thanks. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, I just like to say Anna, congratulations and uh, I have I watched you the whole time you went through here and you have done a real good job and I'm proud of you and love you. Thanks, Thanks, you. I'm Sarah, I'm an alcoholic. Sarah Anna um <laughs> So I love you, first of all. Um, you were the first person to show me around on day one when I got here, and I was blessed to be your roommate since day one. Um, it's been a pleasure getting to know you, and I really look forward to getting to know you more. You're calm, cool, collected most of the time. <laughs> but you really are, like, you're the spinning image of a woman that I look up to and someone I would aspire to be by the time I'm commencing here. So I love you, and you got this. I love you too, Sarah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Leslie, oh, alcoholic addict. Leslie. Leslie. Yes, just like everybody's been saying, um, from the time you came here, you really, like from what they were saying about having these doubts and, you know, all of these things like that, you have really come around and become a leader and someone that is so helpful to others and just such a, such a big helper for all of the girls and I admire you and look up to you and I just wish you all the best and I'm so happy that I've been at Parsonage with you. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Thanks, Love you. Erin, alcoholic. Erin. Uh, Anna V. V for Vixen. That's why I call you on your back. No one's kidding. <laughs> so, um, so she is a Vixen. But I actually think it's a compliment. Um, totally. If you actually look at the dictionary, it is a compliment. But um, <laughs> anyway, you're distracting me. Uh, the first people I met when um, I arrived, I was supposed to be outside with you, and um, I was shaking like a leaf. Um, I would tear some out, <coughs> the snot coming on my nose, and uh, you just looked at me and you're like, girl, I just came out of like the psych ward. So, um, but um, you come, been there for me during a meltdown that was happening a few weeks ago, and I was ready to climb that tree and jump off of it. And um, thank you for that. Because I didn't really want to listen to anyone. I kind of like you know I peeped behind the tree and I kind of ran in a circle around the tree and ran upstairs and you were there. So um, thank you for that. And um, I love you dearly. And you're very funny. And uh, we get each other's humor. Well, a lot of people don't. <laughs> and I'm glad you're saying. I'm glad you're saying. So enjoy your time with your family. And I uh, can't wait to have you back. Love you. Love you, Erin. Thank you. Thanks, Erin. Janine, alcoholic addict. We have a good Hello. Hello. Biggie, hold on. Biggie! 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 Hold on. Hold on, Biggie. There it is. Biggie Brown. Biggie. 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 so much and 
again, congratulations. You put in so much hard work, and um, it's amazing the transformation you've made. It's like night and day. I'm very proud of you, Anna. Thank you, baby. Okay? And I love you so much, and Happy New Year to you and your family, and I'll see you when I get back. You'll stay another month at least, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we want you there. Thank you, baby. I love you so much, and um, I do want to say this. One day you came into the women's den. It was I was in there by myself, and I was um, you sat next to me, and you said, "Miss Vicky, um, I'm so glad that you and I have become friends, good friends." And I looked at you, and I said the same thing. And that special moment right there. Oh. Um, <laughs> I love you so much. I'm so grateful to you. I'll see you when I get back. I love you, Vicky. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vicky. I'm so proud of you. Happy New Year. said this to you, but I came here about three weeks maybe after you did, um, but I looked up to you a lot, like, mm -hmm. I mean, just with everything that you do is inspiring as hell, like you're diligent in your paperwork, That's right. you don't hesitate to help anyone, you ask people if they need help even, like you were the first one to go help the newcomer ladies. Every time that I've seen, I would be trying to go do it, but you're already doing it. Like, <laughs> like, but that, I looked up to that. Like, in a, I got to see you really opening up about getting closer to God, and that inspired me to do it as well. Like, I thank you for that. I do. Like, and I'm so happy that you decided to stay too. I know it was a hard thing for you to really accept, but it it's gonna do a lot of good for you and a lot of good for all the ladies here. Like, I'm glad that I got to come and do this and see you, for real. Thank and thanks for always being there out on the volleyball court. I can always <laughs> count on you for that. That's great. I love you, Anna. I love you too, Shayla. Thank you. Thanks, Shayla. Thanks, Shayla. Oh, Shayla. Oh, Shayla. Oh, Shayla. Oh, Shayla. Oh, Isabella. And then also, Isabella. 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 Anna, um, you were uh, one of the first girls uh, to come up to me when I got here. And I was uh, scared shitless. And, um... You took me to the doctor that first day I was here, and I was really quiet, and you were kind of trying to break me out of my shell a little bit, and with, you know, like, your past experiences <laughs> drinking and, and stuff, I don't know, other things. Um, and I was like, yeah, I did that too. Oh, we both are nuts. That's great. But you made me feel comfortable and realized that, um, I mean, you, along with a lot of other women here, just seeing, like, oh shit, if they've been through that and they've been at that low, like, and I've been there and they, like, seeing that you can do it, I'm like, shit, I can do this too. So, I just really thank you for that and I am really proud of you and happy for you and excited for you staying around and you get to know you guys. Thank you, Isabel. Thanks, Isabel. Thanks, Isabel. Isabel. Yeah, can you not call a Sorry. Hey. Who are you? Hi. Jenny! <laughs> um, so Anna, you and I had so much fun together. Um, Anna honestly was like my sanity at that place. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Emily was like, hey man, you're the most organized, hardworking person I've ever met. It made me feel very inadequate at times, but also pushed me Um I am so excited for you that you're getting out, and I just hope that you continue to help women because I know you've helped so many people there. Um, you're a great example of what recovery looks like and should look like. Um, and yeah, you've helped me so much and I can't wait to see you. I know that now that you're out, we can make a plan for a trip, so I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, I may keep this short and sweet because I'm working and kind of snuck away to call, but I love you so much and I'm super proud of you. I love you, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Anne-Marie Applebaugh. Anne-Marie. And I just want to say thank you. I was so scared when I first got here. And you were like this shining light. And you made me feel so comfortable. And I know I was like 
totally closed lips and were like, what's wrong with this girl? <laughs> but she took me to the doctor and you were right there by my side and I was so scared and it meant so much to me and I'm so happy that you could still be around and you know, I look forward to getting to know you better. So thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you, Amory. Thanks, Amory. Thanks, Amory. I'm Logan. I'm an alpha. Remember one time that I think the time that you started jumping again whenever you straight fucking land on me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard everybody cheering and I thought I got the point and then the ball is rolling behind me. <laughs> uh, and then um it's been uphill from there. Um, we, had a, we, had, we, had a, we had a great ride home the other night, um, despite one minor incident. Um, a little speed bump. little speed bump. Um, a possum is crossing the road, and Anna's, poor Anna's trying her best to not hit this possum. And it swerves, and then, boom. <laughs> hit the possum, and she throws her hands up in the air and looks at the, like, I guess she was, like, looking at God or something. And then, uh, out of my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I've had a, you know, you've, you've been a really good friend um, on the volleyball court. And uh, um, one, one thing that I admire about you, though, is, um, you know, you're, you're your first round pretty much in AA, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're not one of the one who, uh, you know, you, you help the girls. Like, I, I see you helping the girls, and it, it's awesome to see, but you're not the one who's just, like, just absorbing yourself with self-knowledge from through the book. Um, and kind of using that, because what that does, what that can do, what it did to me in the past was build major resentment, especially towards these outside meetings where people, you know, just share about what the fuck ever. Oh, that's not in the book. That's da, da, da. And that just builds resentment. You're just doing the thing, um, taking the steps as they're, you know, directed to take in the book. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, it's really there nice you to see. And um, do you have a ghost? <laughs> What? Do I, just you? Need, I just need a sip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Logan. Thanks, Logan. 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 consider you my coach because I mean I had some athletic ability but I sucked at volleyball and I'm still not good at but I got a lot better thanks to you um, and I remember early on you shared in a meeting how like 
you were very sarcastic and you had like maybe rubbed a couple girls the wrong way because they didn't get your sarcastic jokes and I said something to you outside and I was like, that's me. I love that. Like, that's my humor. And so I knew whenever I'd like make a sarcastic or maybe inappropriate joke, especially out of the volleyball court, I could turn to you and no one else would get it and you'd be giggling and I love that about you. Um, and yeah, I'm very proud of you. Um, I know you've helped a lot of these women in here um, and I'm glad to hear you're sticking around. Um, seeing you around and um, just yeah proud of you thanks Gable thanks um again I'm just gonna piggyback on volleyball since I love all of our things but one of the things I've always admired about you Anna is like you're a fucking competitor. <laughs> like when you get out there, it's not just giggles and laughs, which we obviously have those, but you get out, you have that intensity about you. But you also have that same, like I can see that same mindset and intensity, like you put that into your recovery process. Mm. And um, I'm just really proud. I mean, I know we both kind of towards the end, we're on like the same side of the spectrum, doing a lot of tasks and chores and errands and different things like that. And um, I'm just really proud to see you from when you came in to where I remember the, one of the first meetings, you, everyone was having a good time and people were doing all the noises and all that kind of stuff. And I think you were just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and, yada, yada. And um, just to see the transformation, I'm just really proud of you. Um, we're all always here for you. I love you. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. Love you too, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Janine Alcoholic Addict. I'm going to piggyback off that because he saw what I was going to say, part of it. Um, but I do remember when you got here and sitting up in that front row and you looked around and said, I think this is, or you said, this is all fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I don't know what the F is going on. It's like some cult or something. But then, you know, I'm not sure when it happened, but I remember we had a conversation. I can picture us sitting out there on the back deck. And I was like, I don't know what happened, but you just, there, there was this change. And you dove in, you know, wholeheartedly and accepted that this was, you know, not a cult. Um, <laughs> And this is what, you know, is what you wanted. You wanted a new way of life. You were tired of that old life. And I'm so stinking proud of you. Um, it's why we do what we do, you know? To see that transformation. That's when the magic happens. I know you've heard it before, but <coughs> seeing somebody else help somebody else, that's what it's all about. And I've seen you do that. I'm so proud of you. I love you very much. And, of course, not to bite. We'll see you very soon. But um, you've got a very supportive group here. And they love you very much, and I think they've seen you change as well. And just keep doing what you know you need to do. And do, you know, just a suggestion, once in a while I look at my 15 ways my life is unmanageable. Just to remind myself how shitty it gets, and how I don't want to go back to that. And it kind of gives me a little bit of a boost when I need it. I love you, I'm proud of you, and I know if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll be great. I love you, Jamie. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks Jamie. 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 I'm Jason, I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Jason! <laughs> and uh, the amnesty box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and our, our, our van rides, the BPM music, freaking endless. But it was great, you got into it. Um, no, I remember when you came in. Um, I know there's a lot of that reminiscing of when you came in the door. And um, yeah, and I also remember the phases. Because there was a lot of times where I either pick you guys up in the morning or take you guys back to the house. And, you know, the fortitude of you going through all those phases and knowing at the end of it, there was going to be some, you know, not to quote the big book, there was going to be a solution, right? There was going to be some way that you were going to figure out yourself and everything that was going on with your, with your past, past experiences that brought you here and you just kept diving into it. And now I see a young woman that comes in this door every day from one one day you didn't know what you were going to get with, with Hannah. She'd come in, she was either happy, she was upset, she looked like she had just lost her puppy, you know, like, you know, and then, you know, I was gone for a couple months, but I came back. There's a smile on your face every day. And you had a drive to help these women and be there for these women, which is what this this whole thing is about, guys. I mean, that's what it's about. This commencement shows that it can change. 
people from the inside out with a higher power so that you can freely give it to somebody else. And you're, you're the epitome of that. And all these women and the men here respect you. Um, and it's not because you're taller than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, I've grown to love you like a, a really close friend now. Uh, we've had a lot of good talks in the van rides. No, we didn't. Guys, we didn't have talks. Um, not, but, um, but, you know, just keep doing the damn thing. You know, you're going to stick around. Everybody here needs you. And more importantly, people out there in those meetings and out there, when you're planting these seeds out there, they're going to need you too. Um, and I'm just, I'm super proud of you. I'm glad you, you made it this fourth month and you're sticking around because, uh, you know, you bring a light to this place when you walk in the door. Um, the fan is not here, we know. You know? And um, we love you. I love you, girl. Okay. Love you. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason. I'm Riley. I'm a drug addict. Hey. Um, if it's a cult, you definitely drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, for real. Um, use your in these outside meetings. They're so fucking watered down. Uh, you're going to experience people who really want to get sober. They just don't know fucking how, mm -hmm. and you know how. And um, go out, share your experience, because you're the only person with your experience. And there's people out there who like to do the things you do, listen to uh, bass music, go to festivals. There's people out there who want to get sober. Now you have an avenue to get these people sober. And um, you, you know exactly what to do. Share your experience of the 12 steps and how you took them successfully. That's what people on the outside need. It's easy in here. And uh, outside, it's, it's not as easy, but like the book says, we, we stay sober by helping other people. That's what I've experienced my, myself. Um, so just continue to do it. I respect your recovery a lot. I know you're about it. And uh, congratulations. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Thanks, Riley. Scott, alcohol caddy. Yeah. Oh, Anna. Um, <laughs> I was only here for a short time before I left. And I remember you were still kind of timid sitting in that same seat you always sit in. And... Uh, you know, you didn't share too much of meetings. You would raise your hand every once in a while, but I gotta say, the transformation from the time you got made a senior right before I left, and the transformation from the time before I left to Florida to here is just absolutely miraculous. The the leadership qualities you you show to these women every single day, the camaraderie you guys have, how these women are in that room working both step hours like they should, <laughs> it really sets the example for some of the guys in here, and you know they can really learn a lot from you. Um, I'm really proud of the transformation you made. You're a leader for the women and the guys, um, and out there in the volleyball court. <laughs> I'm glad you're staying for another month because uh, you know you bring the fire, the fireness out for us all. And uh, I'm just really happy for you. You know, I'm really happy that you're about this recovery. You know, you're young. Get it now. Don't be an old man or an old woman. A lot of good qualities about it, and I'm, I'm just so happy for you. Just keep working and uh, take, uh, you know, like Gene's gonna say in a couple minutes. You did that meeting last night, just work 10 and 11, and, and you're gonna get this. Love you. Love you too, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Scott. 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 My name's Gene. <laughs> 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 and you. And Anna, a uh, couple of things. I knew when you came in that, that it was not necessarily your decision, and you iterated that today in the meeting, <laughs> and I appreciated that. That was good for, for some persons to hear. The other thing, uh, when you came in, you really affected my instincts because you were taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what I saw. And you and I talked about this. When you went from that period of coming in to reaching that point of leadership, to quote one of my favorite movies, during that time you endeavored to persevere. In other words, you were going to get this done regardless of what those feelings were uh, prior to coming in here or prior to assuming that uh, leadership role that you did. The other thing that I used to preach to the seniors at the Owl's Nest is, is don't be a vigilante. In other words, a position or the position of being a senior is not one of authority but one of service mm. and you displayed that just so well matter of fact I would get upset with you because you were doing so much that's <laughs> in my meetings I was pissed <laughs> I wasn't doing that I knew what I was doing but you know I used to question you 
flat out, where you been, man? You know, uh, but uh, I truly am glad you're staying just at this time because you have been just an excellent example for not only these ladies, but uh, just for the, the uh, organization as a whole, and for me as well. And I appreciate that, honey. You know I love you very much, sweetheart. I love you too, Dean. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Grandpa Dean. Dean. I'm Avery, I'm an addict. Avery. Oh, Anna. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'll save that. <laughs> Anna awesome. B. I'm so proud of you. Um, yeah, I know you came in before me, but just like the growth from when I came in to now is exponential. You help so many people, and that is very inspiring. Um, we've, we've shared a lot of good laughs. A lot of fun times on the volleyball court, and that is something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Um, I will always consider you a dear friend of mine, and I cannot tell you how much I love you, girl. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Avery. I love you, too. Thanks, Avery. Thank you, Avery. Thank you, Avery. Thank you, Avery. Anybody else? I'm Kyle. I'm a certified Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Uh, hello, Anna. Hello. This is the first time we've ever spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the field of battle. You were uh, you were injured, I believe, when I first got here. You didn't play all that much, um, and then coming back from Florida, I noticed you had improved significantly. <laughs> and uh, that's not just in relation to volleyball. That was in your your demeanor and your drive to really like to take charge, which is something that I feel comes easy to you. Now we're not allowed to speak, right? And that definitely doesn't happen here with the women. Uh, so, uh, but we're observant. The guys see it, and the, the best leaders that I've ever known, and that most people, you know, are more than willing to follow, are the ones that carry themselves in such a way that they don't have to say anything. They do it in their actions, right? So you've represented that to the fullest. But at the same time, there's kind of a flip side to that coin, right? It's kind of a double-edged sword where. You know, I feel like you, you set the bar high for yourself, right? And I can relate to that, you know, with certain, uh, like, inadequacy that I'll feel because I've had family that has been really successful and then pushed me to be successful. And naturally, you find yourself in situations where people are looking up to you. And that can be a big burden to carry. And you do it well. But I want to encourage you to find time for yourself, too. And not to set that bar too high, right? But I've definitely noticed that you have found, you know, the means to success here for yourself, right? Where you're able to humble yourself, you're able to accept things as they are a little more, right? And um, Winston Churchill defined success as moving from one failure to the next failure with no loss of enthusiasm. And I think that if you had lost any enthusiasm, you certainly gained it back. And, you know, this is the perfect example of what should happen when someone gets to the point where they're sitting up in this chair. So for that, congratulations. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. 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 for Trust and Recovery Program. Jack, all you guys that uh, can't remember your name. <laughs> Thank you for being there. We appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm Patty, Anna's mom. Hey, Patty. Um, I am so grateful and appreciative to all of you beautiful people and so thank you, thankful for this fellowship as you saved my daughter's life. Um, the first call we got after she was here for five days, it was the same, Mom, I'm in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> and they make me go to meetings all day long. <laughs> so my thought was, at least she's safe. And then with each visit, I saw the change in her every time we came. But there was one visit. We were sitting outside, and it was so beautiful, and Anna's just sitting there, and I looked at her, I said, Anna, you're so chill. <laughs> and she looked at me, and she goes, it's not up to me. <laughs> and the hope burst through me, so much hope. And that day, Janine, you hugged me, and you said, 
how good she was doing, and you told me she was drinking the Kool-Aid. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> and that meant more to me than anything. And for everyone that has come up to John and I, say hello or a kind word about Anna. We just are so appreciative. And oh, let me get my thoughts together for a minute. <laughs> I've seen Anna heal physically, but more important, spiritually. Mm. It's just amazing the change you have, baby. And I think she's finally finding that peace and serenity she's been searching for for a long time. And now here you sit, just glowing and radiant, and the twinkles back in your eye. And I am so proud of all the hard work and so proud of you. My daughter, I love you so much, Anna Banana Head. Hi, I'm Joey, Menace to Society. <laughs> Anna, there was something in a letter that you had wrote when you were moving out, and you had said that, thank you for all the memories. It's not done. <laughs> that part of us is not done, you know? But now there's an opportunity for more because you're going to be here a lot longer. I probably won't drag you down the stairs anymore by your ankle <laughs> <laughs> or uh, get into fist fights in the bed. <laughs> I did not break your ear, <laughs> it was swollen. <laughs> I, I mean, where I'm at in my life when we met, we were both broken people. We were both in meh situations. You had DJ Bitch Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I had Kevin's <laughs> cryptocurrency thief <laughs> friend. <laughs> but looking at you now, the one thing that's always been missing since I've met you is that light in your eye. It's finally there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> but <laughs> you're here. You're not half somewhere else on another plane. Mm. I love you. I'm proud of you. You really are my big sister. Cool. And hopefully ceiling fans never speak to you again. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Brittany, and I am also an alcoholic. Brittany! And my journey to sobriety started when you came here. Let's go. All right. <laughs> um, you've been a huge inspiration to me on the outside and on the inside. And I've always seen in you what everyone has said today about you. So I'm just so happy to call you my friend and to see how far you've come in this journey and I remember coming the first weekend and you being like I'm in a fucking cult <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the corner and looking around and being like I'm terrified for you <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I kept showing up and I kept meeting all of your friends that you've made here and I feel like when you do get out after however many more months you'll be here <laughs> We have a really good community of people that we can rely on and stick together in recovery. So I'm so proud of you. I love you, Brittany. I love you. Thank you. Happy you're here. Yes. Hey. 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 I guess that's why they call it Sin City. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. 
I tend to think of myself as a one woman wolf pack. <laughs> and I knew when they brought me to the hope, I knew my wolf pack would grow by many. I was alone in the wolf pack, then women joined, and there was a few of us in the wolf pack. <laughs> then I was introduced to the woman I thought, wait a second, could it be? <laughs> now I know for sure I added more women to my wolf pack. <laughs> All of us wolves running around the house in Ravenel looking for strippers and cocaine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Well, I do remember my ride into the Hope from the psych ward, somewhat. Um, as if I didn't feel crazy enough in my disposable underwear and matching disposable bra. <laughs> Ronnie played Christmas music the whole way, and it was September 1st. <laughs> um, right. On a more serious note, there aren't enough words of depth and weight to express how grateful I am for the Hope and all the people in it. I'm sure you've all heard me say many a times, in the beginning, I thought it was all disingenuous bullshit. <laughs> that there was no way people wanted what was best for me or wanted to be my friend. I've never been more happy to be proved wrong in my life. For the first time in a long time, I was surrounded by people that truly loved and cared for me. With that love, I was able to grow weight in ways I never thought possible. It's been said too many times to count that self can't see self, but I was able to see th my growth through the women that surrounded me. They acted as mirrors to reflect the light that was returned to me. They loved and cared for me in ways I was never able to love myself. Mm. The fellowship is real and it is glorious. When I came in, I had zero faith in this program or myself. I was utterly hopeless, but the hope did just that. It gave me hope. It also gave me a solution for living, a daily reprieve contingent on the work I put in. It gave me people that I'm honored to call my brothers and sisters. Every single person in this room and many that came before had a hand in saving my life, a life that I wasn't so sure was worth saving. A wise man once yelled in a meeting, <laughs> human is the best we will ever be. This place has certainly renewed my faith in humanity, or should I say gave me faith in the first place. Human is the best we will be, ever be, and for the first time in my life I've accepted that. If you would have told me 120 days ago that I would, A, I would still be here, let alone staying a fifth month, B, that I would have and live in a solution, C, believe in a power, a higher power of my own conception, and D, that I would be surrounded by a group of addicts and alcoholics that I now call my family, I would have asked you what your DOC was. <laughs> <laughs> so I really want to thank my family for the eternal support that you guys have always given me, and Brittany and Joey, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the love of all of you. And then I just want to thank you all guys, all of you guys again for the love, the faith, and a new lease on life. I love every single person in this room, and you're not rid of me just yet.